Welcome to the Adrian Center for the Art Side-by-Side -Side Awards. I'm your host, Sean Watkins. Side-by-Side -Side pairs top junior and senior art students with resident artists from the Adrian Center for the Arts. These students are nominated by art teachers from all across Lenawee County. Side-by-Side -Side allows local professional artists and gifted young artists to work together to help prepare students for their futures. The students worked with their mentors from September through December. These artists are ready to develop their own set of skills using new techniques and materials striving to do the best they can. Each of these teams display their art right here in our gallery in an exhibit from March 1st to April 1st. To help us understand and critique the complexity of their art, we have called upon our professional juror, Ron Fresnan. Mr. Fresnan taught art for 35 years at Tecumseh High School. His distinguished career was recognized by the Michigan Art Education Association as the Art Teacher of the Year in, the, in 2000. After retirement, he served for eight years as the Visual Art Director at Blue Lakes Flying Art Camps. Now let's hear it from Mr. Fresno. It's a pleasure to have been asked to adjudicate the side-by-side -side student and mentor show for 2021. I'd first like to thank the mentors for their guidance and encouragement of these eight Lenawee County students. Utilizing your expertise, these students have had the opportunity to explore new media and techniques to create these remarkable pieces of student artwork. It's, an also, it's also a pleasure to reconnect with the Lenawee County art educators uh, and their schools for these eight students. On a personal note, Two of the art educators were former students of ours at Tecumseh, and another two of those art educators were student teachers for us at Tecumseh. So I feel I have a real connection with the group uh, over the years that I was an art educator at Tecumseh. Um, the quality of the student work reflects the foundation that you have provided for your students in basic color theory, composition, the elements and principles of art, uh, and just the expectations that you have in your, in your local classrooms has elevated the quality of this student work. So congratulations to each of you for your students, and you should be quite proud of their accomplishments. I might suggest that when viewing the show that you use the QR codes for each of the students. It contains an artist statement by the student of their objectives, their background, what they expected in the program, and their successes. Hi, I'm Laura Van Camp. I am the clay director here at the Adrian Center for the Arts, and I have been doing the side-by-side -side project for a couple of years. Courtney is my student this year. She goes to Adrian High School. Uh, she's very interested in art. This is one of her first um, ways into doing like figurative clay. Um, most of her work she seems to like getting into details and doing small things. She has made dolls before and we have tied that kind of idea into the pieces that she has created this year. Hi, my name is Courtney Smitty. I've been doing the side-by-side -side mentor program with Laura Van Camp. Um, my type of art is usually in 2D traditional hand-drawn with graphite. I've been inspired by a lot of like Eastern art mediums, a lot of anime, that kind of stuff. I definitely enjoy drawing in a more cartoony, less realistic style, but I do draw realistically on occasion. But for the side-by-side -side program, I've been doing clay sculptural, pro um, sculptural building with Laura, and I don't tend to do that a lot, but I have done it a little before and it's definitely different than what I'm used to, but I think what I've made has come out very good so far. The first project you'll see with the woman on her side, with the tree coming from her side, I, I, was, I was inspired by when people, sort of, like when elderly people fall over and they can't get up, you know, kind of like the, the one commercial with the, the funny one, but instead of the, the, the woman falling over and you know passing away or being completely helpless I decided that instead of her perishing she'd have 
she'd be there so long that a tree would, would sprout from her side and she'd just sort of accept her situation. And then for my second piece, which is also another tree-related piece, we have the tree with the branches and the fabric little leaves, but the head, the, the, the fruit of the tree are all heads, but none of them are perfect or, or symmetrical or normal. They're all de misshapen and deformed, but they're still humanoid and they're still there because fruit, like in the grocery store, perfect fruit sells, but the imperfect fruit doesn't sell, which leads to huge amounts of food waste and lead and when, when the the deformed fruit is just as good as any other fruit, just like how people who look different are just as good as anyone else. So that's that, that, those, that's what's inspired my two pieces. And for the future for my art, I plan on definitely working more with 3D just because I don't do it a lot, but I, I've enjoyed it. But I also plan on, on pushing my my like my, my my graphite and two D skills as long as well as getting more into digital art because I like how clean and put together that is. She has two ceramic pieces. Um, I'd like first to comment on the decoration. Um, Courtney has been very selective in using minimal decoration throughout the pieces, and I think that's very effective. Here, the line work around the base of this tree seems to tie that into the pedestal, seems to ground it into that surface. And on the figure, the, the decoration seems to be just on the top surfaces, which indicates to me that there's something being applied or coming down on this figure. In the reclining figure, the proportions are uh, excellent. The, the body figure, uh, body proportions seem to be right on. And then the uh, Courtney's statement, she talks about this reclining figure um, ending her life and the tree growing from it. In this piece, there's a nice analogy in Courtney's statement about imperfect vegetables and fruit and the differences uh, and how that relates to the differences in people. And she, you notice, if you look closely at these faces, the details in the faces all have some kind of imperfection, which ties that story and that thought all together. The terracotta is nicely finished. The clay uh, seems to jump out at you. And the addition of these branches uh, seem to go well with the clay. Courtney's statement uh, says that she has a background in drawing and painting um, using uh, portraiture, uh, doing portraiture and in working with uh, charcoal. It's always interesting to me to see um, a two-dimensional student working in 3D and how that understanding of depth helps those two-dimensional drawings and uh, that two-dimensional work. So Courtney, I hope that this experience has helped you and you'll be able to use this experience in this further developing your two-dimensional work. Hi, my name is Linda Jacobs and I teach uh, glass classes here at the Adrian Center for the Arts. And the, the program that we're doing currently is the high school art program. Um, I myself am a graduate of Siena Heights University. I've been a high school art teacher for 35 years, 19 years in alternative education, and the rest at Jackson High School. Um, I've done um, juried art shows with my students, and also dual enrollment classes through Kimball College of Art and Design. My student, Taylor Reese, is a junior at Adrian High School. Her teacher is Annie Howard there. She mastered glass cutting, mosaic, fusing, copper foiling and soldering techniques, and, and some enameling. Uh, she did a lot of things on her own, came up with new ideas, used materials other than what I supplied. Her artwork is phenomenal. She um, wasn't satisfied at the end of class, begged to do more classes. 
And so we did a few more. Um, and I, I just want you to enjoy her work. She did a beautiful job. Hi, my name is Taylor Reese, and I was given the incredible opportunity by my school to work alongside the amazing artist Linda Jacobs. During these few months of training, I've learned a number of artistic vocabulary and techniques I would have never known about otherwise. These techniques include copper foiling, soldering, and fusing glass. Some artistic vocabulary I've learned are frit, dichroic glass, iridescent glass, stringers, grout, flux, and the list goes on and on. During this mentorship, I've made quite a few different projects, ranging from mosaics to stand-up fused glass pieces, jewelry, plates and bowls, paperweights, and sun catchers. A mosaic is an intricate art that takes lots of time and dedication, as you must first cut out all your pieces to ensure that they fit together perfectly, glue them together, grout them, clean the glass, and then design your frame. For copper foiling, you must first design a pattern, cut it out twice, Cut out all your pieces of glass so that they fit together perfectly, line them with copper foil, flux them, and then solder it all together. Fused glass is perhaps the easiest of the three, as you must first design your picture or pattern or whatever you want to make, cut out your pieces of glass, lay them together, and then cook them in the kiln. Linda has been nothing but kind and supportive to me throughout my whole mentorship, and although there are moments where I wasn't sure how a piece would turn out, it was always worth it in the end. This medium is very difficult, but also so rewarding, unique, and interesting. I am so fortunate to be able to partake in all of these projects, and I hope to take what I've learned and apply them to my artistic path in the future. Taylor is focused on working with glass. She's probably the most prolific of the student artists, completing numerous pieces, from small jewelry pieces, cast glass, fused and slump, copper foil, multimedia. I'd first like to focus on this piece here, this small slumped bowl. I think it has excellent use of color. The dichroic glass in the corners, the use of texture. I think it's a very, very nice piece. Very nice design. In doing copper foil, you quite often see the seams. Are they even? Are they well-rounded? And Taylor has been able to accomplish that in this functional clock piece. And this multimedia piece, Taylor has extended the floral design in these two pieces of glass onto her frame, adding more depth to the piece. If you look closely, the precision in her cuts and her matching of the seams in her mosaic is, is, is exact. And finally, this colorful, fused, enameled, slump, and uh, mosaic piece. I love the cartoonish looking face of the slump area, the use of color, and again, the precision in her cuts and matching of the pieces that go together. A really, really nice grouping of glass pieces. Congratulations, Taylor, on your many, many pieces of work. Hi, I'm Amy Philp, and I'm a figurative sculptor here at the Adrian Center for the Arts. It was my pleasure to work with the very talented Olivia Berry. She um, also did figurative work. One of her uh, monumental pieces, uh, actually it was a monumental project for her to take on, was uh, a bust, head and shoulders, of a woman, and she did just a fabulous job. A couple of her other pieces also have uh, our figurative. Anyway, it was such a pleasure to work with her, and I know you're going to love her work as much as I do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Olivia Berry. I'm part of the side-by-side -side program, and I'm working with Amy Phil. My medium that I was working with was sculpture, and honestly, I was really nervous to start it at first. I hadn't done sculpture in years. I did it when I was younger, but I haven't done it until now. But I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, it's quite different from all the other mediums I've worked with anytime recently. I normally tend to gravitate towards printmaking and painting, but this was so much more um, dimensional, I guess. Not dimensional, but very three-dimensional that it just 
gave such a different feeling. Um, it's a lot more tangible, I guess. Um, it's a great experience. I'd really recommend sculpting to anyone who even wants to try just a little bit. In Olivia's statement, she, she says that she has a background in printmaking and painting. And I think she's utilized those uh, experiences in their sculptures. Her first two pieces here are smaller, and I think she utilized the size to get a, a background or experience on facial features and body features. She then moved to this large portrait, large bust, called Grace. If you look closely at Grace, you see amazing detail in her eyes, nose, mouth, especially in her collarbone. The face is turned, which eliminates that straight on portraiture, or the straight on bust, and that balance. I think moving the face, turning the head, complicates the, the sculpture, makes it more difficult to do. You notice the smoothness in her hair. I think that creates more focus on the face of the bust. The finish, to me, is perfect. It creates a very soft finish, a very feminine-like finish. Congratulations on your work. And I hope that this experience in working with 3D further develops into more experiences in your two-dimensional work. So congratulations. Hi, my name is Jill Schaefer. I'm the 2D uh, director at Adrian Center for the Arts. And this is my studio. I work in pastel mainly. Uh, I do watercolor and uh, acrylic also. My student, side-by-side -side student this year, uh, is uh, Carly Sayasniak. She uh, had not worked in pastel before she started the class. Now, she's very proficient in pastel. Her theme this year was nature. In my personal projects, I tend to work with color pencils, drawing portraits and still lives that relate to the idea of family. Size and color palettes depend on the subject matter of my piece. I was nervous when I began my side-by-side -side experience. Knowing that I'd be working with pastel, I was unsure of what my art would look like, only having experimented with the medium once or twice. I was extremely shocked with the outcome of my art and the progression in each piece. I experimented on a variety of papers, including watercolor paper, handmade, pastel mat, and more, in addition to the many techniques I learned, including how to use alcohol and watercolor washes. In my personal projects, I leaned toward portraits and still lives, and I knew that I wanted to create landscapes and nature-themed pieces during my time in the program. I wanted every piece to tie together under a whimsical nature feeling, incorporating the variety of colors unique to each drawing. This fall, I will attend the College for Creative Studies in Detroit, Michigan, where I plan on majoring in illustration to one day obtain a career in the medical illustration field. I would like to continue to work on a bigger scale and would love to experiment with different mediums I've never used. I would like to branch out and create pieces that more people can relate to and create a connection with. I think Carly comes into this program with an excellent background in color theory, portraiture, her drawing skills are excellent, and she's taken that background in those areas and applied it to pastels, which is a new area for her. If you look at some of her beginning pieces, she's developed a confidence in working with pastels throughout, uh, up until the conclusion of the program. This first piece, this large piece, this is her final piece of her side-by-side -side experience. It's a beautiful example of pastel. The techniques that she's used, the various techniques that she's used, the colors are impressive. And within this piece are small areas that you can see smaller drawings, smaller pastel pieces. Her use of overlapping pastels has created depth and almost a photographic looking piece. 
And this piece called Concrete Nature, I'm super impressed with the facial details that she's been able to uh, create. The proportions seem spot on. And the use of pastels in creating this drapery are just really, really nice. She's created that feeling of fabric on a two-dimensional surface. This piece is done on sandpaper. And finally, I think the use of these two ferns creates a, a balance within the piece and also depth and frames the figure nicely. And finally, the butterfly done on handmade paper seems almost like a photograph. The detail within the wings and the pastels create a softness that you see here in the butterfly's wings. Congratulations, Carly, on three amazing pieces of pastel. You should be very proud. Hi, I'm Tanya Manti. I'm a resident at the Adrian Center for the Arts, um, I think for about six years now. And this was my first year of doing side by side with a student. Um, I'm a painter, work mostly with acrylics and oils, water media, sometimes encaustic paints, and dabble in some other things too. Uh, I'm the Michigan Art Education Association Elementary Educator for 2021. And I do a lot of organizing of teacher programs here at the ACA. This year I was fortunate enough to be able to work with Carly Logan as a student. I teach at Britain Deerfield High School. She's a student there. And it just so happened that it worked out that she was available and I needed a student. So she came on board with me. Um, so she's been coming to my studio to work as a side-by-side -side artist. Um, so although I'm still instructing her, it's a little bit higher level than what she would normally get in the classroom. Before joining the side-by-side -side program, I was not confident in the art I was making at all. I was dwelling on every aspect of it and what other people would think about it. and. It was really putting a toll on my art and really setting me back. It wasn't until I joined the side-by-side -side program did I really get to thrive in an environment and let go, let loose, and really do the type of art that I've been wanting to do because I wasn't afraid of my peers judging me or looking at my art and thinking a certain way about it. So I learned that through this program, I like to work really large and super abstract. It's like my favorite thing to work and with acrylic paint. I really love working with paint. And I think this program has helped me for the future because I truly don't think that I would be the artist I am today without the side-by-side -side program. I might comment on the location of this piece. I think it's in the perfect spot. When you enter the gallery, you see this explosion of color, shape, and form. Uh, I think it's mounted properly. A frame would not do it justice. Um, it's, it's just the right piece and the right place when you enter the gallery. This piece of Callie's called Wonderful, to me shows a transitional piece from her student work here in collaboration with her mentor and this large painting here. If you look closely at this larger painting, the colors are impressive, the contrast and the lines, the shape and the texture all work well together. But looking closer at the painting, you see all of these smaller statements. For example, these two profiles. You might ask yourself, what are they saying? How are they communicating? Are they talking about the painting? Are they talking about something at school? You know, I'd also look here at this small area where this mouth seems to have captivated this profile. I'm also drawn to this area here with these organic shapes. Although brightly colored, you see a transition from this lower sphere to this upper sphere. To the left, maybe not intentional, but I see a figure in this area. And finally, in contrast to the realistic looking profiles on that side, you see this very 
flat, cartoon-looking profile here, and you see that it is showing emotion. The focal point to me is this area, with these very crisp lines and very distinctive contrast. It seems to draw me into this painting. There's so much movement, there's so much texture, just a wonderful piece. Congratulations. To me, this almost looks like it could be the beginning of a graffiti-like mural. So congratulations on this piece. I hope that you can continue to work large. And uh, in your statement, your artist statement, you say that you would like to work with and create pieces of artwork that make people happy. This piece makes me happy. Hi, I'm Rita Kudran. I'm a member of the ACA here in Adrian. And um, I started ceramics probably in 2010 at Adrian College and then it just carried on over here when we uh, developed this place. Um, I mentored a student from Sand Creek, Leah Gregg. She's an excellent student. She's kind of into the same uh, nature forms that I, I do. And uh, we had a fun time. Hi everyone, I'm Leah Gregg, and this year I had the privilege of studying ceramics in the side-by-side -side program with my teacher, Rita, who is a resident at the Adrian Center of the Arts. This year I created a lot of works of art surrounding nature and ideas of nature with the help of my teacher. We collaborated on a lot of these works and a lot of them were from my ideas of painting and what I had previously done in painting that I could transform them into 3D works. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this and my teacher and I collaborated a lot on a lot of these pieces and I am very proud of the outcome and quite pleased with how much I was able to create so I hope you all enjoy that part. Um, previously, before I started the side-by-side -side program, most of my art experience was with painting and it's been quite a great experience transforming that then into 3D works of art. Um, my next step after this program, I really hope to keep with clay and be begin to develop more of the range of things that I can create. Um, I came up with a lot of the, these ideas collaborating not only with my teacher, but other residents in the Adrian Center, so I would like to thank them especially because even though they weren't my teacher, they really helped me. I had specific people helping me with throwing or trimming or even repairing works. Um, it was really great to work with a lot of different people, um, so I hope you all enjoy my show. Throughout Leah's many ceramic pieces, she has used nature as a theme. The leaves are very soft, the colors are muted, but the texture of the leaf is very prominent. These small pieces are just wonderfully done. In this piece, Lisa, Leah has combined a wheel thrown bowl with a hand built tree. She's used glaze to glaze these petals. And you can see that each one is very, very um, precisely done. The use of sand, the black sand here adds to the piece and brings the thrown bowl and the piece together. Leah, your wall piece called the grapevine is exceptional. Your use of texture is exact. The addition of the vine here becomes the focal point. I'm really pleased to see you use non-traditional glaze decoration with your acrylics. I think that your use uh, in clay will help you in your two-dimensional skills. Congratulations on a wonderful grouping of clay pieces. Hi there, I'm Christina. I worked with Ruby during the side-by-side -side program on monotype and monoprinting. Um, I just wanna say I had a really great time working with her. I think she accomplished a lot. We talked about color theory and various methodologies within monotype and all of which she 
was very eager to try new things and explore and um, push herself in new directions artistically. And I hope everyone enjoys the amazing work that she came up with. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ruby and this video is meant to represent my process and works through the side-by-side -side program um, in printmaking. So previously I had used mostly just colored pencils and also acrylic paints in realism. So the whole printmaking process and like using inks was completely new to me. Um, but I wanted to learn something new and gain a new skill set um, and also work more abstractly in my art. So during the program, I used ink for the first time, and I got to learn how it reacts with different textures of paper, and how it transferred onto uh, different textures of fabrics and materials. And I liked experimenting with all of those, and also contrasting colors to try to uh, understand what feelings they conveyed in the art. So when working on my projects, I found inspiration through the works of the artist Susan Goldman, who uses colorful prints um, to prioritize the relationships of color through prints of flowers and other geometric shapes. And as I'm often inspired by nature in my artwork, I found her works also very inspiring. So the first piece that I created, which you can see in the exhibit there, um, is it consists of warm and cool colored leaves on a warm background with rope textures along side the leaves and I try to exhibit some motion through the leaves um, by having some faded leaves close to more intensely colored ones to look like they're falling. I was really happy with uh, some of the crisp textures that I got from using the leaves. My next project um, I use leaves as well, as, um, along with some mesh fabric to resemble a ghost. And this project was actually inspired by a photo shoot I did with my sister and some of my friends um, during the fall when all the leaves were changing. We went out and <laughs> we dressed in some sheets and sunglasses uh, to go out into the woods and take pictures as ghosts. It was really fun. Um, but I liked the texture that the mesh made on the paper, as well as the contrast of color between the ghost and the leaves to convey an image of like the coolness and warmth of autumn. My last piece, um, I combined the techniques I learned from the previous projects and the, also the textures of leaves and different fabrics to form a conglomeration of um, all those techniques that I had learned. I wanted to also stick with the nature theme I had going on, so I used fabric to give an interesting texture to like the sides and background of the piece, and I used um, cool colors on different leaves to contrast uh, different parts of the background of the piece, and I also used uh, some string to create floral patterns, and I was really happy with the outcome of all the textures. So in the future, I want to continue on um, working with different colors and textures and how uh, they can convey different feelings in artwork. And um, so the ink that I used was very messy at times, so I think that I'll probably stick to more paint projects and stuff, but I wouldn't be opposed to uh, getting some ink in there every once in a while just to um, diversify my artwork a little bit. Um, I was very glad to be a part of the side-by-side -side program and learn all the new tech techniques that I did uh, to expand my knowledge and creativity in my uh, future projects. So thank you. Bye. Ruby's work is printmaking and she has three wonderful prints. In her statement, she says that um, she is uh, motivated by the artwork of artist Susan Goldman. And Susan Goldman works with natural forms and overlapping shapes with bright colors. And you can see that in her, in Ruby's pieces, she has copied those styles. In this first piece, you'll see overlapping shapes of green and the muted oranges and yellows. To me, this almost seems like time travel from one season to the next with summer here in the uh, foreground and the fallish yellows and oranges and reds in the background. The texture 
cord fabric here contradicts the natural forms, although it assists and brings together the abstraction of the piece. In your leaves, you show nice crisp edges, which contradict the ghost images in some of the leaves, which indicates to me a sense of depth. And your third piece, Ruby, you've combined all of the processes to create another piece with leaves and fabric. The overlapping shapes of the leaves create depth over the, the uh, muted fabric in the background. Your colors are beautiful, and I can tell from these that you have a background in colored pencil and painting. It's always pleasing for any art educator to have students that research artists and then look at those styles that are used and use those styles as a basis for their work. I always found that helpful in creating ideas and motivating students. And you certainly have done that with your pieces. Congratulations, Ruby, on three wonderful prints. I'm Katherine Royer. I recently retired from 20-some years of teaching at Adrian College. Uh, I've been an artist for a long time, and I had the distinct pleasure of working with Jocelyn. Uh, she's a senior from Sand Creek. She's dual enrolled at Jackson Community College and taking the last of her high school courses online. And she had all kinds of lovely skills, digital skills, traditional skills, and such an open mind and such a wonderful work ethic. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Exley. My art is um, heavily inspired by all things nature. So my three pieces I created um, kind of represent to me the different sides of nature. So there's the um, orchid, which represents the plant side of nature. There's the luna moths, which are the insect side of nature. And the swallow, which is the um, animal side of nature. In each of my three pieces, um, nature kind of represents growth to me. Um, not only because nature grows, but also because these pieces helped me to grow as an artist. Um, I went into this experience not knowing most of the things that show up in my pieces. Um, so Kathy taught me how to do printmaking, how to do letterpress, and just different ways of uh, attaching everything together and making a really interesting piece. This experience helped me to get out of my comfort zone and out of my box of art. Um, and try new things and try new styles and different ways of doing things that I wouldn't have thought of before. I hope to continue to use the different techniques and the mediums that I have learned how to use um, in my future pieces as well. This first piece here with the title of Strength as a digital generated background with letterpress, your print, and an addition of the white. The white has a nice contrast with the black ink and creates a focal point for you to enter the piece as you, as you look at it. Your next piece, Luna, uh, Lady Luna, is an exceptional piece. Its composition is unbelievable. You've used the digital background of the faces of the moon, which balances the pieces. Your piece is symmetrical, and the addition of the acrylic. And it must be a nice light acrylic wash because you don't see that heaviness that you would normally see with acrylic paint. It creates a softness within the Luna Moth. It's just a beautiful piece. Congratulations. The final piece is probably the best student work I've seen in printmaking. Your lines are precise. The placement of the swallows is exact. The combination of your print with your background brings the piece together. Especially, I especially like this area here where the wings form parallel lines. And the background these lines seem to join both swallows together. 
One might look at this and think it was a wood cut, but the lino cut create, the background of the lino cut creates these textural lines, which in itself creates the depth. Your background are pages from a dictionary and this left-hand page is especially interesting because it's from the W section of the dictionary. The title of the piece is Wonder, and if you look in the top left corner, there's the definition of wonder. There are three words on this page that I see. If you look closely, you'll see wonderful as the first entry. Here at the bottom, woodblock, and finally wood print which really ties that piece together. To me, this piece was well thought out. And all the, all the parts of this join together to form a wonderful piece. This is college level work. It's very, very good, very precise. Jocelyn, your precision and your woodcuts is amazing. All the edges are precise. Uh, and your presentation is just wonderful. So congratulations on being selected the 2021 Side-by-Side -side Student Artist. Jocelyn, on behalf of the Adrian Center for the Arts, I'd like to present you with this award as the most outstanding art student in Lenawee County. Congratulations, and also congratulations on this outstanding artwork. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to choose something that was subtle but um, had some meaning to it. So um, I chose the, these two dictionary pages because um, they have the word wonder and wonderful in them. And this one, there's the word return behind it, um, which relates to the swallow because swallows always return home. Doing beeswax was something that I had never done before, along with most things that I did. Um, but it was interesting to try a different way of doing it and make the background more subtle but still obvious and to soften it up and make sure that the swallows were the focal point of the piece. I had never done any work like this before and so when I first met with Kathy we kind of talked about what I wanted my work to be about and what I wanted to do with my career and things after high school and we talked about graphic design which is what I want to do and so we kind of took my inspiration from nature and my interest in graphic design and put those two together to make layered pieces that were taking graphic design principles but in a different way. Winning this was not expected but I am very grateful and I am going to use this money to continue to create pieces like this and buy myself some art supplies to uh, make more lino carvings and things like this. I think it's appropriate that we're standing here with Kathy's piece um, as the mentor for Jocelyn, the winning student for Lenaway County. I'd like to present this award to you on behalf of the Adrian Center for the Arts for your encouragement and your guidance throughout this whole process of this year. It's been made especially difficult with the pandemic. Congratulations on your work and your students' work. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel like I won when I got Jocelyn <laughs> to work with. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our artists. We want to keep this amazing program growing. I'd like to introduce you to the 2021-22 Side-by-Side Student Artist. Hi, I'm Tanya Manti, the art teacher at Britton Deerfield High School. I would like to introduce you to Lila Bunshu, the 21-22 side-by-side student that I've selected. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Lila Bunshu. Um, I've really been interested in doing drawings and watercolor, but I'd like to do something out of my comfort zone for the side-by-side. -side. I'm really excited. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Annie Howard. I am an art teacher at Adrian High School, and I am here to introduce to you Gwendolyn Froelich. And uh, Gwendolyn is a junior at Adrian High School. She is one of my International Baccalaureate students. And um, Gwendolyn is just such an outstanding student. She is a 
researcher and experimenter. She's always testing techniques and uh, so eager to learn about anything and everything. Uh, she works in 2D and 3D, uh, will try anything, and um, Gwendolyn is so reflective. Uh, she's always trying to learn something uh, about herself through her work, and um, I think Gwendolyn will be the perfect candidate. Uh, she's so curious and, um, and receptive. So Gwendolyn, I know you're going to love this. Hi, my name is Victoria Beagle, and I am the art teacher at Sand Creek High School. I would like to start out today by saying thank you to the ACA and the resident artists for creating this opportunity for our art students in high school through Side by Side. I also would like to congratulate Mia Gregg and her mentor. Mia is our current ACA Side by Side student artist, and her and her mentor have had a tremendous year, so congratulations to both of you. I also am here, of course, to introduce our next Sand Creek ACA Side-by-Side -side student artist. Her name is Veda Hernandez. Veda has excellent drawing skills um, and shows just a tremendous passion for creating and making her artwork. Veda is hardworking and um, always challenges herself and her skills to the next level. I think that um, her commitment to excellence and learning are going to make her a perfect candidate for the side by side program. Congratulations. Hi, everybody. My name is Annie Howell. stretching materials to, uh, to new limits, and um, I think Lily is the perfect candidate for this program. Uh, I think it will challenge her, and I think she'll enjoy working with a professional artist. Lily, knock our socks off. Hi, I'm Andrea Miller, one of the art teachers at Adrian High School, and I recommended Aubrey on a trip for the ACA side-by-side -side program. She loves working with clay. Um, I don't think I've ever had a student more excited about working with clay. Uh, these are some of her projects that she has worked on so far this trimester. Some are still in progress. So I know Aubriana is super excited to be able to work um, in the side-by-side -side program at the ACA. Thank you, Mr. Fresnan and students. We would also like to thank all of our mentors whose role in making this program so successful. You have given so much through their donation of considerable time, ex expertise, inspiration. You also go the extra mile to prepare all equipment and materials for our students. We would also extend a special thanks to our program underwriter, Shelly Hickman. We wouldn't be able to do any of this without her support. We invite all to see the show in person. ACA galleries are Thursday through Friday, 1 to 4, and Saturday, 10 to 1 p.m., or by appointment by calling 517-759-3005. Hope all can come and bring friends and family.